Okay, so let's speak about regular languages. So regular languages are defined recursively. So um, we define the empty language to be regular. We define the language that uh, contains the empty string to be regular. And then for every letter in our alphabet, the language that contains only this letter, right? This is a string that has a single character, which is this, this letter in the alphabet. We consider this set uh, to be a, a regular language, right? To remind you, a language is just a set of strings, right? Okay. And now things become more interesting, right? So given two strings, uh, L1 and L2, uh, we look on the union, and the union is a regular language, and so is the concatenation of uh, two languages, right? So you take uh, um, you take the two languages, and then you concatenate all the string in one language against all the string in the other language. You get a collection of string, and this is this set, the concatenated string. Um, all those, uh, by the way, the, the slides are already annotated because uh, I tried, this is the second, my second try to record this video. The previous one failed because I forgot to unmute my microphone. Okay. Um, now, to remind you, LI is the a shorthand for concatenating L with itself I times, right? So the cleanest star is just... Um, marked as L with a star, it's just the union of Ln n goes from zero to infinity. Okay. And as I said, as I mentioned, this star operator is called the Kleene star and uh, we will use it a lot. Um, and another important thing is that uh, if L is regular, then the complement language is regular. So this is complement. Okay, by complement, of course, I mean, you know, all the strings that are not in the language are in the complement language and vice versa. Okay, and now we are allowed to apply any uh, finite sequence of such operations to get a language, right? And regular languages are, are this set of languages you can generate by, this, uh, by a finite process, and uh, those languages are closed under uh, union, concatenation, uh, cleanly star, complement, and other operations that we, saw, we will see later on. Okay. Um, now, so it's important to emphasize here that I allow you only to do this union operation or, um, or concatenation, so on, only a finite number of times. Right, so in particular, if I allow you to do infinite union, then uh, you take a collection of languages, each one of them regular, and you take their infinite union, you don't necessarily get a regular language. And I'm not going to prove it now because it's a bit too early, but intuitively you can get any language you want if you take infinite union. So it's very important that here regular languages are defined by a finite process. You know, like just think about them as some kind of, you generate them by running an algorithm, this recursive algorithm that build them bottom up, and, you know, this uh, construction have to take finite time. Okay. Um, now, um, if, uh, if we have a string W, right, then the language containing just this string is regular. Right, and the reason, of course, is that think about, uh, let's say, the string A B A. You can generate, you know, by definition, you can generate the, the regular language, which is just the string A, just the string B, and just the string A, and then you can take the concatenation, right? Uh, and you will get this uh, language that has a single string A B A. Okay, so that's how, and, and of course, you can repeat this process for any for any string, right? You, you generate a regular language for every character in the string, and then you just concatenate them in the, uh, from left to right, in the right order. So any um, language's single string is regular. Now, every finite language is regular. Indeed, 
uh, if you look on a finite language, it's just a collection of strings, right? Every string, you can create a language that contains the string, as we saw above, and then you just take their union. So, so we are done. Okay. Now, here are more examples of uh, regular languages. So, you know, a keyword in the, you know, a language of all the keywords in the Python language, well, Python language is finite, so it's, of course, regular. Uh, it's a finite language. Uh, similarly, dates, if you write dates uh, in two digits per day, month, and year, this is finite. Uh, if you write um, a number in uh, Roman numerals, so this turns out to be finite, right? Uh, the largest number you can write in Roman numerals is something like uh, a few thousand because you're not allowed to repeat uh, a letter more than a certain number of times. There was an extension used during the Middle Ages to denote millions, but, you know, uh, still, the the numbers you can write with Roman numerals are quite uh, limited. And, um, and then we have things like, you know... Um, W contains um, CS three seventy four as a substring, right? Uh, so if substring means here, you know, consecutively, right? A B A C S CS three seventy four. I don't know A B A. And to see why this is regular, in fact, requires some thinking because it's not immediate. So let's try to do it. See, the, uh, think about the language containing CS374. Just this thing. This, of course, is regular. We already saw that. And then you can concatenate it with sigma star and sigma star, right? Sigma star, to remind you, is the set of all strings, which is regular by definition, right? Because sigma, sigma is a finite language, uh, just uh, a you know, the strings are just the lit different uh, letters in the alphabet, and then you take the star, so the clean star. So this is definitely alphabet, uh, definitely regular. So now this is definitely as such regular. Okay. And this is a very inconvenient way of writing this stuff. We will see a better way to do it later on. Okay. Uh, so here is uh, a few review questions for you and to decide whether or not a language is regular or not, okay? And uh, that's it for now.